on City Pulse tonight at 10. Next week, Canada's country queen, Anne Murray, does a whole series of concerts at the O'Keeffe Centre. And I think this week, there are a lot of Anne Murray fans out there that have Anne Murray fever. Last night at the Chelsea Inn, a group of aspiring songbirds got together to participate in the first ever Anne Murray songbird contest. really wanted to enter that Anne Murray contest, but you couldn't get Twisted Sister off I, your I, mind. Exactly. I, I've really got that invitation down fine, and I, I had the dress for Anne Murray and everything, but, you know, it just wasn't going to work. What are you expecting uh, to see here Sartorial tonight? Sartorial a... notes, I think, report. Now, we know that John Sewell did not wear a tuxedo, but did he ride his bicycle? I'm trying to find that out. Uh. Will Julian Porter arrive, number one, and will he be wearing one of his standard pink shirts, which suggests a political point of view that might be at variance with his own? He's notorious for pink shirts. And is there any truth to the rumor that Colin Vaughn... Has a yes. Colin Vaughn's blind. City Pulse at 6 continues now with a look at sports. Let's go live to DBK. How are you doing, Deb? I'm doing great, and we're still in first place. Going into last night's ball game in Anaheim, the Blue Jays and the Angels were both on six-game winning streaks, and only one team was going to get to keep that streak alive. Well, today, the Angels are in the loss column. In the second inning, Ernie Witt at the plate, Canadian Kirk McCaskill pitching for the Angels. Witt drives one just past Rod Carew at first. George Bell comes in to score from second, and it's 1-0 Blue Jays. In the fifth, vintage Reggie Jackson cracks one over the right field fence. Goodbye, a solo home run that tied the game one off. But then in the seventh, Lou Thornton Singles to right, scoring Bell, and the Jays moved ahead 2-1. to one. And here it is with two men on, Tony Fernandez steps up to the plate, nails one right into the right field bullpen, scoring Thornton and Matuzak, 5-1 Toronto. The Jays won at 6-3, they're all alone in first place, a half a game in front of the Orioles. And the Jays are in California again tonight. Dave Steve will start. From the pro ranks of uh, baseball, let's move to the amateur ranks of cycling and part three of our series. It's a long road to the Olympics, and it all begins here. These are the faces of the future. The aspiring cyclist hoping to pedal his or her way onto one of 12 spots on Canada's national team. Selection tends to be rather political because we're, we're stretched across such a long country. They feel they've got to have someone from British Columbia and someone from Quebec and someone from... And not always the best riders are selected. Yes. That front tire too much. The 80s has proven to be a decade of rebirth for bicycle racing, but ask any amateur rider in Canada and they'll tell you this country still has a very long way to go. Thank you. Bicycle racing in Europe is like hockey is to Canada, and uh, people in Canada just don't, they aren't educated to understand what bicycling is all about. I think 
bicycling has to be pushed as a, as a sport. Easy. There is no doubt the racing aspect of cycling is growing. The Miela race team is just one of four in the area that will compete in some 75 races in Canada and Europe this season. Racing is an area that is growing immensely in the cycling field, but there seems to be a great misconception about it, mainly due to the fact that cycling is such an individual sport. But believe me, there are plenty of tactics involved in this sport of cycling, and some of them are even dirty. We're taking turns at the front. Each of us will break the wind for a short duration and uh, drop to the back of the line and uh, rest, and then uh, follow, uh, follow the rider in front. Crush. You don't last long out there if you're a really dirty guy because I think uh, when the official's heads are turned the other way, your number's going to come up where you get paid back. With four to five hours of hard training every day, the bicycle becomes an extension of the cyclist's body, and constructing the perfect race bike is a craft only few have mastered. Good tension. It's the, the latest alloys that you can buy, okay, and it's used on, on bicycles. But you're talking about here equipment such as the rear changer, which is worth $200, okay? Why? Well, it's made of the best equipment. The, the, the bolts, to give you an example, are titanium, titanium alloy. It's the same alloy they use for rockets. In the spring of 1973, Jim Miela took a chance on the construction of a velodrome, convinced that Metro would pay to watch professional cycling. Miela spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in its construction and importing racers from Europe, only to lose his shirt. The sponsors were difficult to, to be to be got to be involved in uh, cycling, so we ended up losing a pile of money. But uh, we were about 10 years too too early for the for the sport. Today it would work. But bicycle competition doesn't end here. Tomorrow we take a look at the craze of the 80s, BMX racing. Now, lest we forget all the weird and wonderful things that have happened in the last 30 days, here are the antics of April. We start with baseball and Morgana, the kissing bandit of the month. This time her victim is Nolan Ryan of the Astros. Now that's a real fan. Still on the diamond, April's Airborne Award goes to the Jays' Tony Fernandez, who goes way, way up to stab Dave Stockstill Liner. Same teams, subsection one. Self-defense stab of the month. Charlie Liebrandt off a of Fernandez shot back to the box. And the encore of the month, Billy Ball is back in New York for the fourth time. The It's Finally Over Award of April goes to the Leafs, who finished their worst season ever with the worst record in hockey. Disappointment of the month, the Blizzard call it quits due to lack of funds, due to lack of fans. The War of April, marvelous Marvin Hagler and Thomas the Hitman Hearns in what some people say was the best eight minutes in the history of boxing. And finally, the four-legged roller of the month. Watch this little guy go. And those, my friends, are the antics of April. Stay tuned for the holy mackerels of May. And here's your chance to win a trip to Walt Disney World. From May 18th to the 21st, our very own Jim McKinney and two professional athletes will join one viewer to form a team that will compete in the goofy games at Disney World. To qualify, you must be 18 years of age or over, male or female, willing to take part in a sports competition. So to enter, send a postcard to Sport Goofy, care of City TV, 99 Queen Street East, Toronto M5C 2M1. All entries must be postmarked May 10th with the winner selected May 13th on City Pulse at 6. The winner must telephone City Pulse by the end of the newscast and answer Monday's news test question as well. And tonight, Gord, of course, the Battle of Quebec, the Habs versus the Nordiques, and Russ Salzburg will have highlights. What a game that's going to be. They genuinely don't like each other. I know. I'm really hoping for the Nordiques, and that's only to save my face in the pool, and I know you <laughs> want Montreal because you want to laugh in my face. <laughs> I think the Habs are going to do it. I think it's going to be a tight game, but I think there'll be lots of goals scored. I don't like you, Gord. <laughs> I don't like your earrings, Deb. <laughs> we'll talk to you later on. Bye. We'll have the world according to Gross when we come back.
according to gross tonight, exercising my mandate at the betting window. Okay, give me $20 win place number eight. And for $2, I want to key the eight horse in a triactor. The eight on top with one, three, five, seven, and nine. $1 partial wheel.